how could something so terrible happen in America? Is it okay to feel scared? What can you do to help? Tonight we're talking to you and your parents about Oklahoma City. Because when bad things happen, we need one another. This is a Nick News Special Edition, When Bad Things Happen. Now from New York, here is Linda Ellerby. Hello. As you know, a bomb was exploded in Oklahoma City, killing many people. And there's nothing anyone can say to anyone that can make what happened not so. But how we get through what happens counts. We'll talk about some of the ways. Begin with this. The president called for a national day of mourning. That means it was a day for us to feel sad for the people who were killed, for the people who were hurt, and for the people who love those people. In Oklahoma City and across America, we hurt for them and with them. This terrible sin took the lives of our American family, innocent children in that building only because their parents were trying to be good parents as well as good workers citizens in the building going about their daily business and many there who served the rest of us who worked to help the elderly and the disabled who worked to support our farmers and our veterans who worked to enforce our laws and to protect us let us say clearly they served us well and we are grateful you have lost too much but you have not lost everything. And you have certainly not lost America. For we will stand with you. For as many tomorrows as it takes. We're here with some kids who, like the grown-ups of America, have questions. And we have with us Dr. Alvin Rosenfeld, who works with kids who have problems, who are afraid, who are in trouble. And we're hoping to talk together about this. Uh, you all know what happened. Were you scared by what happened? Jose, were you scared? I was very scared. Is, is there a right way to feel about this, Dr. Alvin? I don't think there really is. I think some people feel scared, people feel sad, people feel confused, people don't know whether they should be scared, and some people don't know what to feel at all. I think everybody has a reaction. Uh, everybody wonders what's going on. But I think that the hardest part is to just let yourself feel what you do. And the president has told us it's a national day of mourning, reflection, and thinking and joining together as a country. Natalie, how did you feel about all of this? I felt, I mean, I felt so horrible for like the little kids that were in the bombing, innocent people that, that just like their lives suddenly just torn apart. And, I mean, I was really sad. Yeah. I yeah. was scared, too, wondering if it could happen, like, to, like, will I be, like, somewhere where a bomb blows up? Like, if I'll ever be somewhere and be caught in a bomb, bombing. Now, that's got to be a natural worry. It's got to be on everybody's mind. And, and in a way, that's really what a terrorist wants. They want you to be scared. They want you to be afraid. They want you to feel, oh, my God, I can't go out of my house or go to sleep. But what's really amazing is, is what a good job the police and the FBI do that this almost never happens in America. Uh, we're so safe, and we can't let people like this win by scaring us so much that we don't do what we usually do, because that'll stop us from being free, which is so much fun about America. Have you all been talking about this at home with your parents? Tiffany, how about you? Have you been talking? Um, not so much as home, but we had a discussion about it in school, and the same thing that was on my mind was on everyone else's mind. Why? Why would you blow up innocent children as well as adults? I, I don't even know the reason behind this, to tell you the truth. What, like, in the news or anything, was, was there any reason as to what the terrorists said? See, I don't Did they really, say why? In a, in a funny way, we all want to know why. I don't think in a funny way it really matters, because whatever your reasons are, Hurting people in a way like this that no one can make go away is so wrong that it can never be forgiven. It's got to be punished terribly. Bailey, you're from Oklahoma City. Yes. 
Tell us about your day, that day that the bomb went off. Where were you? I was at school, and I was sitting, we were singing for choir the next day. We were in mass, and I was, we were singing there, and we had to stop the song because we start to kind of fall and trip, and we start to, we feel something, and our teacher, she just says it's thunder, and she had to go upstairs, and she found out by the people upstairs in the offices, and she came down and told us. Chip, you're also from Oklahoma City. Were the kids in Oklahoma City talking to one another about that this week? Or? Well, not much the kids, but I mean, it's all over the news, and I just want to know why people would do this. Yeah, I, I think we all want to know that. I, I, I can't answer. I, mean, I know people always come to a psychiatrist and they say, hey, why do people do these really bad things? There, there are lots of people who are angry. Most of us have been angry at times. We don't go around killing people and blowing up buildings. There are a lot of people who don't like the government, but most of them don't go around blowing up buildings. I don't know what makes somebody treat someone else as not a human being and not a son and a daughter and a father and a mother that you think they're just like an animal or, or not even like a brick that you could blow up. Uh, it's terrible. And all I could say is that I think it, it's right, two things. First, it's right to want to punish those people. Now we have some kids on the telephone that we'd like to talk to. I think we have LaDonna from... Uh, Let's see, I think she's calling from Oklahoma, and she's seven years old. Do you have a question? Yeah, I want to know, why does the TV keep showing it again? Well, they keep showing it. I'll try and answer that, although I'm not sure that there is a good answer. They keep showing it again because they think that maybe you haven't seen it, or they think it's important enough for you to see again, or maybe they think that you want to see it again. Just because it's on television and these images are very frightening and very sad, you don't have to watch it. You can turn it off. You can go outdoors. You can read a book. And the other probably really important thing to remember is that you see this over and over on television, but it only happened once. And that's real important to remember. In a perfect world, nothing bad would ever happen to anybody. We do not live in that world. The truth is that suffering and pain are part of being alive. But if the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. And sometimes kids can lead the way. Nearly three years ago, a terrible hurricane hit the coast of Florida. People were killed. Others lost their homes. Many, many people were frightened. And they suffered, as many are suffering right now, from something called post-traumatic stress. Those are the bad feelings that come after something terrible has happened. In August 1992, thousands of kids in southern Florida lived through a night of 200 mile per hour hurricane winds and rain. It's obvious that just thinking about it upsets Stephanie still. This is not quite used to it yet. My name's Stephanie Allen, and I'm 12 years old. Stephanie's home was completely destroyed in the hurricane. Thankfully, the family wasn't in it. They now live with their grandparents in a new home. This is my book of collections, and only the next year survived. Seeing everything damaged is like a total shock. I just don't want to see anything like that again. Even eight and a half months later, there's emotional concerns and emotional areas just beneath the surface of these kids. Okay, this is my grandmother. I love her. And we're going to Lot 109, <laughs> where I used to live. It's like so different now, and nothing in here is going to be the same. Most of the people that lived in here, like the kids and stuff, they like all moved. What is familiar to us before a disaster strikes, our backyard, a ride in an elevator, can become completely unfamiliar and terrifying. This is where my house used to be. And this is the steps from my old house. The trees around here used to be really nice, and now there's nothing. There's no shade. They snapped like matches in the hurricane. I'm going to remember this forever, no matter how hard I try to forget it. When do you really think, think that uh, things will be back to normal? I don't think I ever will be the no. same. you ever going to be the same? No. Well, we just saw Stephanie in that story about the hurricane, and. Now, almost three years later, Stephanie is here with us. Do you feel better now? Um, yes. 
things get better in time. I really believe that. Um, if I if I had a chance to relive it, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I bet. Yes, Flannery. Um, Bailey, what do you, the ribbons that you're wearing mean? Well, the blue one right here means they represent um, Oklahoma, and and the purple one represents the people, the kids that were in the building at the time. In the newspapers, uh, I read I read something in the newspaper, and like they were they put in like the recipe how to, of for the bomb, mm -hmm. and I was like, why why are you revealing this to everyone? You know what? Because Only somebody who's truly stupid would do that, Natalie, and there's no other answer. You know, sometimes people just get older, not smarter. Okay, on the telephone we have Megan from, uh, Megan's from Riverside, Missouri, and she's 10 years old. Are you there, Megan? Yes, I am. Do you have a question? What is it? Is it okay to be mad at the people who did this? Good question. Of course you should be mad at the people who did this. They did something really terrible, and they deserve to be punished, because if you do something really terrible, you deserve to be punished. So you'd be mad. So what happens now? Kids should maybe seeing other bad memories come up because of this bomb in Oklahoma? It's going to bring up the bad memories. It, it's natural, and those memories, uh, as uh, Stephanie told us, never really go away. But what changes is they stop being so important to us, and they stop being so central in our lives, and we go on enjoying other things in spite of them. Is there any, any one message you'd like to give to parents right now? I think you ought to be there for your kids. I don't think you should force feelings onto your kids or force reactions. But listen to what they say, hear the words, and answer their questions honestly and from your heart, not from your head. If the question is, how could someone do such a terrible thing, there may be no good answer. But if the question is, who did this thing, then kids need to know that the people of the United States are determined to find out the answer to that question, beginning with the President of the United States. I would say to the children of this country, what happened was a bad thing, an evil thing. But we will find the people who did it, and we will bring them to justice. This is a law-abiding country, and neither the leaders nor the citizens of this country will permit it to be paralyzed by this kind of behavior. President and Mrs. Clinton have spoken to kids several so times this week. On Saturday, they used country. radio and television but to say know, that the good people of this country care worried, and are on the job. I want you to remember that your parents and your friends and your family members all love you and are going to do everything they can to take care of you and to protect you. That's really important for each of you to know. I have promised every child, every parent, every person in America that when we catch the people who did this, we will make sure that they can never hurt another child again, ever. Gee, Chip, do you feel protected? Mm, a little bit. Yeah? Dr. Alvin, we got a lot of telephone calls and letters and faxes from kids who said, I hear Los Angeles is next, or I hear Michigan is next, or I hear wherever it is I live is next. What do you want to say about that? I think America is remarkably safe. I think that our government and our president and the FBI have done a great job in keeping us safe. Maybe we have to do a better job. But before that next time something like this happens and we've forgotten, there'll be car crashes, there'll be accidents, there'll be a lot of bad things happen. This is very, very, very rare. And I think this is a good time to talk about blame, because we all want to blame somebody. Serene, you're an Arab American. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you this week? Um, well, I heard a lot of blame towards uh, Arab Americans or Arab terrorists, and I think that was very unfair to blame them, because wherever you are or wherever you're going to live, there's going to be violence everywhere. And to point the finger at one, one background or is incorrect to do because, I mean, everyone has done, like, violence. Not everyone, but, I mean, wherever you go, you're going to find it. There's good and bad people everywhere. Right. What do you want to add well, to that? I think that, that we have five million Arab Americans in America, Muslims, Christians, Druze, other religions, and I, and I think that almost all of them are wonderful people, law-abiding people, who are part of our community, and to blame them 
for what a few people have done elsewhere is so unfair. It'll be like blaming every, if it's true, the people who are accused, like blaming every white person in America because this building was blown up in Oklahoma. It just makes us stop thinking. Okay, on the telephone we have Mitch, and Mitch is calling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he's 11. Are you there, Mitch? I'm here. What would you like to ask? I just want to know, were John Doe 1 and 2 beaten when they were kids? Oh, an interesting question. Were they beaten when they were kids? I have no idea if they were beaten when they were kids, but the fact is that we probably have a lot of people in America who were beaten as kids, and almost none of them do terrible things to other people. So I don't think that, even if they were, it doesn't explain how they could do this. Yeah. We have a telephone call from Brandon in Seattle, Washington. Brandon is 8. Are you there, Brandon? Yeah. What would you like to say? How can we help? Oh, that's a good question. I think kids everywhere want to know what they can do to help. Well, you might write cards and letters. Bailey, your class already did that, didn't they? Yeah, fourth, second, and third. We have some right here. One says, you're cool. Get well soon. And it has a heart carved out. and says, I hope you get well soon from Eric. Oh, that's good. And that's helpful. You, maybe you want to make a donation. Maybe you want to send your allowance this week. And you can do that by calling Feed the Children, 1-800-627-4556. Now, Chip, you were working in Oklahoma with Feed the Children already this week. What were you doing? Making boxes, putting flashlights together, and folding clothes for the little kids, stuff huh. like that. Yeah, I noticed... Um, the firemen, they would ask, you know, a lot of people are helping, um, they would ask for like flashlights or something, and in 10 minutes there would be a truck of flashlights there for them. Yeah. There would always be help. Natalie, what would you like to say to the people who bombed this building? Well, I would like to say, I mean, you did something extremely horrible and it ruined people's lives, and I mean, I mean, uh, how can you live with the guilt? Of doing this and I want to say to the people in Oklahoma that suffered this bombing just keep your hopes up and um, things will turn out for the best Stephanie um, get to know your neighbors and stuff it shouldn't it shouldn't have to take a tragedy to get people to you know go around and help and see how other people are doing um, and that things will get better in time I'll guarantee it Zach um, I mean it's okay to be afraid but you should just try to forget about it and don't think about it, or it will just get worse. Bailey? I think um, you, if some people out here, if you've heard or know some people that got hurt or something, um, you can help their friends and stuff and try to cheer them up also. And you don't always have to help by helping about this bomb. You can help by just getting to know a friend or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Natalie, you have one other thing to say? I just had a question for Bailey since she mentioned that. Did anybody in your family get hurt? No one in my family, and I'm lucky. But for the kids out there that did have something, I'm sure all of us are in your prayers. I mean, we're praying for you. Um, I have a question for Tim. Where were you when the bomb exploded? At school. At school. Okay. Sometimes we need to say things again and again and again just so we understand how true they are. We have said before how important it is for all of us to remember that there are many, many more good people than bad people, and that for every villain, there are a hundred, a thousand, a million good people. Let us not forget that, and let that be the story you remember from this week, and let these be the pictures we remember from Oklahoma City. I am the heartland, great and wide. I sing of hope, I sing of pride. I am the heartland, hear me speak, in voices raised by those who seek to know and love and understand the secrets of the I felt a big rumble and loud noise and it, it scared me and when they told me it was a bomb I got really frightened. There was lots of people that died and I just felt really sorry for them. Now I know that I'm not home just 
not just praying for him, but now I'm also doing a lot more things for him. Just type it across the middle, across the end, okay? You want two across this way and one this way for candy. We're helping um, put together boxes to send downtown with stuff in there to help the firefighters and stuff. I wanted to come down here and help so I could feel like I was doing something because, like, I'm lucky that, you know, I wasn't hurt or no one in my family was. I didn't think people would come together like this, and they do, and it's just pretty neat. Doctors stopped whatever they were doing and went to hospitals. Nurses, firemen, and they're Oklahomans helping, and the rest of the world's following. I'm from San Angelo, Texas. I'm here to help the people out. Anything we can do, we're here to help. You learn a lot, uh, like how to work as a team. There's people that don't get along uh, normally, and now they pull together for one cause. Just basically help everybody recover what they've lost. What amazes me is how much love there is in Oklahoma. During explosions, people get hurt. Remember love. We found out about all the children that were hurt and the adults, and so we decided we would make cards and banners and posters so they could um, get better sooner. I made a poster that says no to bombs and to gas and to powder for the children in the hospital because it reminds them to um, feel okay and to be brave and stuff. This is one of the cards I made. It says get well soon. Some kids in the hospital might need a friend. It seems as though everybody's coming together and we're all, and we're not looking at each other's colors and we're not looking at each other's denominations or um, our weaknesses, but we're looking at our strengths and what we can do to help. You know, when something really bad happens, everybody's gonna be sticking together and that's good. Hey, we need to love each other and not turn from each other. I am the heartland. I survive to keep America, my home, alive. Thank you for being brave and thank you for being here today. After a week in which a terrible thing happened, we tried to build bridges to one another instead of walls around ourselves. We all understand that when scary things happen, it's okay to be scared. But there's one more thing to understand today, and that is this. Nobody can ever know what happens next. But we can never, ever be so scared about what happens next that it keeps us from enjoying the life around us. If life is a gift, then let us untie the ribbons now. I'm Linda Ellerby. Goodbye for Nick News.